What are you doing, Rocky? Hey everybody, Stacy here. Welcome back to my channel. If you guys have goats or you're going to get goats, something that's important to have is a medical care kit. I've actually got two bins that are my medical care kit for the goat, and I'm going to go through the stuff with you guys to show you what you might want to keep on hand. You guys might remember in one of my earlier videos I mentioned that Buster had surgery on his face. He had an abscess removed. Well, the abscess came back and I was able to lance it and drain it and clean it with some saline solution, but you can see he's doing pretty good this time and I didn't have to spend a thousand dollars on a vet. Oh, photo bomb. Hey, Rusty. Problems and medical issues can arise at any time and you may not have a store that's open at the moment or a place where you can get some medical supplies. So it's always a good idea to have some of this stuff on hand in case of emergencies. I'm not a veterinarian or a medical professional, but I have been raising goats and other animals for over eight years. And I want to share with you what I carry in my own kit. This stuff is the best stuff in my opinion. Doesn't mean it's the only stuff out there or what everybody uses, but I'd like to show you some of the stuff that I recommend personally. Okay, let me go through box number one with you guys. We've got this Veteracin spray and it comes in so handy. This is for any kind of infections or wounds or open scratches, anything like that. Second thing on the must haves is activated charcoal. It's only a matter of time before your goats get into something and eat something toxic. And activated charcoal acts as an antitoxin and will absorb those toxins if you give it to them right after they eat something. This is a fly spray that you could use to spray around their wounds or on their face to keep flies from landing on there and laying any kind of eggs. Aspirin. Talon 50, this is an injectable antibiotic. Another antibiotic, Caravet 200. Iodine, now this is good to clean wounds, but it's also used to dip um, the umbilical cord. When a baby is born, you snip the umbilical cord, tie a piece of floss or thin string up close to the belly, and you dip that cord in iodine to keep any kind of germs and stuff getting inside. So yeah, power punch is something good to have on hand. It's if you have a goat that's um, lethargic or sick or not doing well, and they need that energy boost, it's like a super vitamin to get them going. Vetorex. So this is for when uh, goats have a cough or a cold, sneezing. I do have some Safeguard Wormer in here, but I've heard that Safeguard is no longer a recommended brand of Wormer because uh, a lot of the parasites are growing immune to it. Also, if you're worming a goat, you want to make sure to get a fecal done, a fecal test done to figure out what type of parasite you're dealing with. You don't want to just treat them with some generic Wormer and you don't even know what kind of worms you have. Okay, this stuff here is Wonder Dust, and it's a powder that you pour onto a big scrape or a big wound that you can't stop the bleeding. It's kind of like a styptic. Okay, this is another very important product to have in your medical kit. It's called bloat treatment. Sometimes the goods get into something they're not supposed to eat and it'll cause a bloat. And what that is, it's when the gases collect in their intestines and it'll start pushing on the intestinal walls and pushing against one another. It could cause intestinal failure. So this bloat treatment is used as a relief for that. Ooh, this is another good one, it's teramycin. So sometimes goats will get something in their eye or maybe contract pink eye. Teramycin is like an antibiotic ointment that you could put in the eye. You put it two or three times a day in the goat's eyes until it clears up, which usually takes about a week. But before you put this in, make sure to check their eyes if there's not anything in there that's irritating it, because then if you don't remove the obstruction, it won't help at all. Vetterson also makes a pink eye drop that you can use. Milk of magnesia is something that's also good to have on hand. So in case your goat does eat something toxic, along with the activated charcoal, this will help expel that toxin. If my, if my goat shows signs of lice or mites, I use uh, flea and tick shampoo. Tridine 7 is kind of like an iodine. Okay, now this is a debatable topic. This is permethrin powder. So if you do have lice, you can pour this on the goats. Um, you just want to make sure to wear a respirator and make sure that the goat doesn't breathe it as well because it is toxic. Copper bolus helps with parasites. So if you give your goats one or two of these per year, uh, that should be sufficient to help fight parasites like worms. This is saline wound wash. I actually used this the other day when I opened up the abscess on Buster's face to clean it out. We've got liquid form of an antihistamine. It's kind of like a liquid Benadryl. Um, this is good if your goats are out in the yard and they just happen to stumble upon a yellow jacket nest. Goat electrolytes, it's kind of like Gatorade for goats. Whenever they had a lot of diarrhea and they're throwing up a lot, you want to make sure to restore their electrolytes just like you would as a person. This stuff is called New Stock and it's made with sulfur and pine and maybe a couple other things, but it's a topical treatment for big wounds. It helps kind of create a scab and keep it clean. Some of the stuff I have in the medical kit is for when a mama goat will have a baby. 
One of those items is a jelly, a lubricant. That way, if you've got to go in, you glove up, put some of that stuff on, and go and help position the kid if it needs to be repositioned for the mom to give birth. I've also got ivermectin paste, 1.87%, and this horse formula is the same that you'd give to a goat, uh, except obviously you want a dose for the weight. This tube is for an adult-sized horse weighing maybe 1,200 pounds, so you want to divvy that out properly when you've only got like a 50-pound goat or 100-pound goat. That's basically everything that was in the first kit, so let's take a look behind door number two. So on the inside of the lid of this kit, I've got a needle and some thread taped here. That way, if you ever have to suture a wound, it's there for you to use. I've got some liquid type syringes. This isn't the kind that you have a needle on that you inject something. This is the kind that you would probably feed something in their mouth with. For instance, some of my goats don't like the activated charcoal pill. They won't swallow that. So I open that up, mix it with some water, put it in a syringe, and I can squirt it down the throat a little bit easier. You want some towels for any kind of cleanup that you might need to do. I kept some bottles on hand for when I raised goats as babies or if somebody had a goat that I needed to help. Um, it's got a Pritchard nipple on top. Um, and that has a little bead in there that helps the goat from choking if uh, it's drinking too fast. A pack of sterile gauze. Baking soda is another good thing to have. It helps whenever a goat eats something toxic. Ammonium chloride. Now this stuff is very important if you've got weathered males because sometimes their diet may not have the right phosphorus to calcium ratio and it could cause little stones to build up in their urethra and they can't pee. So ammonium chloride, you mix with a little bit of water, give that to the goat and it should help break down those stones so they can pass the stones in little particles and they could eventually pee again. Stethoscope box of gloves. You definitely want to have a thermometer on hand. This is one of the most important things to have because one of the first questions a lot of vets will ask you is, hey, what's the goat's temperature? A goat's temperature normally should be between 102 and 103 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is inserted rectally. A little flashlight. And I've got more activated charcoal in this kit. This is in the form of charcoal caps. That's a brand name. I've got this stuff everywhere. It's always a good product to have on hand. Charcoal caps again. This is a banding tool. It's for when you want to castrate your young male goats, and it should be done at no earlier than 12 weeks. Between 12 weeks and 16 weeks is what a lot of folks recommend. That way the male's urethra has time to form and grow properly, and it'll help prevent any kind of health issues later on. Basically what you do is you take one of these bands. It looks like a green Cheerio. It's got a little groove in it, so you put the band over the groove spread that open. You want to make sure to get both testicles down in there um, and leave a gap between the stomach and the band um, because if you put this too close to the to the stomach it can cause um, separation later on. Their skin might stretch and that hole where their testicles used to be could open up and open up and cause all kinds of issues. So make sure that you put the band down about a finger width. Now I've got a set of scissors. I've got the little protective tip on them. I've got puppy pee pads that I use as birthing pads if a uh, mama goat is expecting. A hair dryer. Now, people are wondering why is there a hair dryer in there? Sometimes when goats get sick, their body temperature drops, and using a hair dryer is one quick way to get their body heat back up to normal. I've got some self adhesive uh, tape for injuries. I do have a couple syringes in here that has the needle. That way, if I have to inject something under the skin, like the tylen. Another roll of adhesive tape. Some people run their own fecal examinations and you could get a box of microscope slides with the glass cover. And what you do is take a fecal sample, break it up, put it in some saline solution, mix it. You put it between the slides, look at it under microscope and you can compare it to a chart and find out what type of parasite eggs you see in the goat poop. So obviously you need microscope for that. And lastly, I've got a birthing chart. It shows the different positions that a goat can give birth and how to maneuver the kid if you need to. There's a great example right there. And that about covers it in here. All the other stuff in here is just repeats of what I've already got. Okay, so I showed you pretty much everything that was in my personal care kits for the goats. But if you're just starting off, some of the basic stuff I'd recommend to have first and most importantly would be activated charcoal. 
If you've got males that are weathered, definitely get some ammonium chloride, digital thermometer, teramycin ointment, definitely the bloat treatment. Veteracin spray, lastly is milk of magnesia. I'm sure I've missed a few things here and there that other people would recommend and that's fine. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and you learned something. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. It's got a little groove. Well, that one's popped off.